And now, this. The name's Daphne. Daphne Doolittle. The dame with the private eye. It was dawn in the city that always sleeps, and I had just tied a big blood-stained ribbon on my latest caper, cleverly dubbed The Case of the Pernicious Papa Peacock. It had been a long night filled with shootouts, meandering monologues from my nefarious nemesis. Papa Peacock, playboy of perversion, careful with fear, my dear Miss Doolittle, as the blazing beams of my twinkling tail feathers burn you alive. <laughs> Papa's burgeoning battalion of screeching peacocks. Car chases. The NBC logo echoing, echoing in my cranial lobes every time the peacocks screeched. Katy Perry ringing in my ears every time I turn on the radio. Papa Peacock's ninja sidekick, the aging yet agile ex-porn star Stormy Daniels, trying to shred me alive with her whips and chains. And of course, a quick midnight stop at Eaton Park. I'm sorry, uh, the late night buffet won't be open, open for another hour. But it says right here on the menu it is to be opened now. Peacock's right, toots. You're welching on your word. Where's the buffet? Uh, the fluorescent light bulbs over the buffet burned out. Uh, we have to replace them. A likely excuse. Bask in the blazing beams of my twinkling tail feathers. Look, toots, I know you got it rough here. And believe me, I'm all in with the fight for 15. But where's our buffet? The chef, the chef, he absconded with the mini muffins. Every last one. We can't go live without the mini muffins. She's right. This is a crummy crisis. Uh, would you like some fried zucchini instead? A rough night indeed. But as dawn dawned, Papa Peacock and his aging yet agile ex-porn star ninja sidekick, Stormy Daniels, were once again secreted away within the bowels of the state pen. I shall return to little and the beams of my twinkling professors will make ever brighter. And the mini muffins were gingerly dispatched back to their rightful hot plate on the Eaton Park buffet. Oh, Miss Doolittle, you even changed the fluorescent bulbs for us. Here's some more fried zucchini as a token of our thanks. Uh, don't forget my tip. And I returned to my office on the third floor of the old building over there, intent on taking a long winter's nap and pondering a much-needed vacation, when I was immediately driven back into dusk's diminutive shadows by a strange smell. A smell that faintly resembled cleanliness. I cautiously moved down the hallway toward my office door and tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Then I heard a voice. Uh, hey, sorry, Chief. Let me get out of the way here. <laughs> it was my assistant, Stinky Pink. Uh, sorry about that, Chief. I was on the floor. What were you doing on the floor, Stinky? I was eating my breakfast on it. You were eating your breakfast on the floor? Yeah. Look at it. It's so... <gasps> clean. Uh, yeah. It's so clean I could eat off it. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, but but this is my office. How did it get so clean? Beats me, Chief. But look around. It's the whole office. Stinky was right. It was the whole office. From floor to ceiling, cleanliness reigned. Even the wobbly ceiling fan, which usually dispersed more grime than air, was wobbling a little lighter this morning. And as I walked around the office, I discovered my papers were in order. The trash can was empty, and the porta john next to the filing cabinet was standing upright. <gasps> so what is it, Chief? Have the windows always been that clear? Ever since they was clean, Chief. <laughs> and all these years, I thought they were tinted. Stinky, do you know what this... Uh, Chief, why are you smelling me? Lift up your arms, Stinky. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Even your pits smell like a warm apple pie on an autumn afternoon. I thought I felt like a new man-child this morning. Do you know what this means, Stinky? Uh, I need a new name? Well, that. And this is a mystery. It is? Well, think about it, not so stinky. 
You are clean. This office is clean. Has, has any of this ever been clean before? Uh, no, never. Even my pet pig, Hoink, needed to shower when he left here. Exactly. So, not so stinky. Who or what has cleaned this office? And is this serial sanitizer still at large, cleaning other offices? No, oh, that's what I was supposed to give you, Chief. This. This? That. It's an address for a Reverend Dippy Smalls. What does Reverend Dippy want, other than an inexplicable cameo? He's got the same problem as you, Chief. It's his church. When he arrived this morning, it was different from the church he left last night. It was clean, pure, holy. Even the gold plating on the collection plates was shiny. Well, not so stinky. Perhaps I should pay a visit to this Reverend Dippy Smalls. And pay a visit I did. Reverend Dippy was the senior pastor at the thoroughly modern church of the hip and sacred stage lights, where every week's service was a big budget show for the Savior. The good Reverend Dippy greeted me in his usual attire of a clerical collar, a black shirt, and skinny jeans, with bright red light-up Nike sneakers that played holy, holy, holy every time he took a step. Not bad for a late blooming hipster pushing 70. Oh, 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 it was the strangest thing, Detective. Our stadium seating was spotless. Our holy grounds coffee shop was pristine. And our divinely inspired bookstore was dusted. And our green room was actually green. Hoo-hoo. And, and there wasn't a single donut crumb into the carpet. And even our sinners were washed in the blood and soapy water. <laughs> Do you have any idea, Reverend Dippy, who could have committed this accentuated act of corporal cleanliness? Oh, well, uh, no, no. Reverend Dippy can't say, but around town there has been stories. Stories? Yep. Seems as if uh, other folks are discovering their schools, their, their, their offices, their, their hospitals are transformed overnight. Whoever is doing it is never seen and never disrupts the daily routine. It's like a... A miracle with a mop. And have these folks been approached by anybody in the days leading up to this speckless showering of suds? Well, uh, funny you should mention that. Uh, seems we were all approached by this woman a few weeks back. A woman? And what did this woman say? Well, she told us all the same thing. Her company would transform the way we looked. Interesting. Can you, um, think of her name? Oh, uh, her name won't. Well, no, no. <laughs> See, Reverend Nip is no good with names. Reverend Nip just calls everyone brother and sister and hopes for the best. Now you listen to me, Reverend Dippy. Oh, oh. Hey, 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 you're, you're hurting Reverend Dippy. I'm running out of time, See, The serial sanitization is surreptitiously sweeping the somber oh. streets of our sluggish suburbs. Oh. I need to know who's doing it. Now what is this woman's oh, name? Oh, Reverend Dippy, don't know. Think! Martha! Martha, that, that's impossible. That's my mother's name. Uh, Reverend Dippish, too. Uh, well, don't think we're friends oh. now, pal. What is this serial sanitizer's name? Uh, it's, uh, it's Diane. Diane, it's and her uh, last Diane. name? Uh, oh, oh, uh, Reverend Dippy don't remember. Is it John? No. Jacob? No. Jingleheimer? No. Shit! No. Well, that was my oh. last guess. You better think fast or you'll be collecting 10% at the pearly gates before you can count your parishioners two by two. Magnone! Yes, yes. Diane Magnone. She's the one. She's the one. Where I, can I find uh, her? Uh, oh, Reverend Dippy don't know. But, oh, but no, no. Reverend Dippy hears that she has two offices. Her first office serves the upper Ohio Valley area, so the West Virginia Northern Panhandle, uh, Eastern Ohio, that is, and, and her second office services the Akron, Canton, Youngstown, and, and Cleveland area. See? That doesn't help me. Oh, Eagle Manufacturing in Wellsburg. Yeah, Reverend Dippy hears they're one of her clients. You might find her there. Eagle Manufacturing, eh? You better not be lying to me. Oh, Reverend Dippy swears on a stack of tithes and offerings. Reverend Dippy's not. Oh. 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 The weirdest Dippy cameo ever. Oh. I left 
Reverend Zippy wallow in in his sermon notes and dash down to Eagle Manufacturing. And as I pulled into the alley behind the main building, I could clearly see the shadow of my cereal sanitizer through the windows. She really knew how to make them spotless. Drawing upon many years of training and experience in the art of stealthily tiptoeing through the tulips, I slowly jiggled the door open and... Uh, oops, what's that? And there she was, encompassed by a halo of Mr. Clean. Diane Magnone, the cereal sanitizer. Who's there? Drop it, sister. Excuse me? The mop. Drop the miracle mop. Drop the... What is this? Name's Doolittle. Detective Doolittle. <coughs> that ought to take care of that. What do you want with me? I've been tracking you and your people all over the panhandle, Magnone. Tracking us? But, but, but why? We're just... I know. I know what your gig is, Magnone. I know what you're up to. What I'm up to? What are you talking about? You've been cleaning up a lot lately, haven't you, Magnone? Well, we are a cleaning company whose business was built from scratch in 2013. Don't get smart with me, sister. I want to know how you've been doing it. How I've been doing it? Yeah. How do you get your buildings to look so spotless? How do you get them smelling like a meadow instead of mothballs? How do you get stinky to be not so stinky? Oh, well, the last one was an accident. We thought he was a statue in your office, and we polished him. I mean, he just stood there with a blank look on his face. <laughs> He's been learning to think. Well, it won't happen again. No, it better happen every time. I hate wearing clothes pins on my nose day in and day out. Oh, you got it. But that doesn't explain how everything else is so clean. Well, now that's part of our promise at Corporate Cleaning Group. You see, back in 2013, we saw a market need for hospital-grade cleaning in office buildings to reduce sick time and in satellite medical facilities for patient and staff protection. And over the years, Corporate Cleaning Group has mastered the art of efficiency while providing solutions to the challenges that you face in your facility. Like stinky? Like stinky. In fact, we learn the flow of your facility and systematically perform the quality work we promised you. Using cutting-edge cleaning technologies and our proven track record, we promote the health happiness and productivity of your building's occupants through customizable janitorial solutions. And best of all, you won't even know we've been there since we clean around your schedule and your flow of business. <laughs> well, no wonder it took me by surprise this morning. My office was transformed overnight, just like Reverend Dippy, just like everyone else in the area. It wasn't a miracle, Mop. It was you. Yes. Our team is committed to a clinically clean approach that provides the most effective clean possible, while our quality control systems work to guarantee your satisfaction. Really, Detective Doolittle, you didn't have to go to all this hassle. <laughs> well, you could have just called me. How would I have done that? Well, I gave you our number when you hired Corporate Cleaning Group to clean your office. You gave me? I hired? Yes, Detective. Oh. 740-278-7238. Or you could have visited us on our website at corporatecleaninggroup.com. Well, there you have it. I, the ever-deductive Detective Doolittle, was the culprit of my own surprise. Huh. Maybe I do need a vacation. But in spite of my foggy fumble, I'd managed to crack this confounding conundrum. With my victory in tow, I returned back to my spotless office and joined Not-So-Stinky Bink on the floor for yet another scrumptious breakfast of eggs and pancakes. Oops. I spilled maple syrup on the linoleum, Miss Doolittle. Not a problem, Stinky. I know just the person to call. 
7238. Hello, Magnone! And with that, I tied a neat and tidy Febreze scented bow on the case of the cereal sanitizer. Yet another wily whodunit demystified and de riddled by yours truly, Daphne Doolittle, the dame with the private eye. Our thanks to Corporate Cleaning Group for sponsoring Cloak and Dagger on the Air Ladies' Night. Our cast included Bethany Fernball as Daphne Doolittle, Chris Carter as Papa Peacock, the Playboy of Perversion, and as Stinky Pink, Gretchen Carter as the Eaton Park Server, Carissa Martin and Gretchen Carter as the Peacocks, and uh, Dave Zaneski as Reverend Dippy Smalls, with Nancy Longo playing Diane Magnone.